Hey guys, hello and welcome to Track by Track Reviews. I'm Rory Sullivan. Sitting at my computer today, my camera broke, stopped turning on. So I'm going to see if I can either fix it or get a new one. But uh, for right now, I'm using the webcam, my Logitech webcam. Um, it's got some really retarded effects on here. So you can look at me like this. But, uh, yeah, I've had some audio issues in the past with this webcam, which is why I stopped using it. It seems to be working okay now, but uh, we will see. Um, anyway, moving on to the review today, which is The Strokes' new album, Angles, which came out, uh, I believe, the 21st, the day after my birthday. Um, so about a month ago. Still very fresh. And uh, The Strokes got really big with their, uh, their album. Their debut album, Is This It? which was sort of garage rock. It really just had a lot of fun, youthful energy, um, which I liked a lot, and which, to me, makes it really memorable. And a lot of what they do is really simple, but really just catchy. And that's the bottom line for me with the Strokes, is that they're just a lot of fun. And I don't think they're top-notch musicians, but they get the job done, and they have some of the most catchy songs you'll ever hear. It's been like five years since their last album, First Impressions of Earth, and uh, this should tell you about where I stand with the Strokes. I've never heard First Impressions of Earth because I'm not a <clears throat> die-hard Strokes fan. So actually, the, the five-year hiatus was even longer for me because I didn't hear their last album. And um, it went by pretty fast. I wasn't like thinking about it, like, when are the Strokes going to do a new album? But um, I still I check up on them, but it's not always a band that I'm like following step-by-step. Uh, Track by track? No. With this album, the big thing is, as the album title suggests, um, coming from a lot of different angles, the music is. Julian Casablancas, the front man, um, sort of tried to distance himself from the rest of the band, even recorded vocals separately from them, so that they would be forced to sort of take charge for this album. Um, so really, it's uh, very democratic um, in the way they did things, is what they say. And um, really, you've got input from all members of the band, which I think was a, a bold idea. I think it was a cool idea and then to name the album Angles. The songwriting on this album is said to be inspired by R.E.M. in Boston, and it's definitely not as garagey and raw as uh, an album like Is This It, but still very catchy. So let's go track by track and check it out. So the first song on the album, Machu Picchu, is very busy as far as guitars go. You've got some really catchy guitar parts coming from both sides of the headphones from all angles, if you will. And um, the chorus is about as catchy as any stroke song I've ever heard. And you've got a great uh, guitar riff that comes right after the chorus, which I love a lot. There's also this really great part towards the end of the song at about the two minute and 30 second mark where <clears throat> Julian starts singing the same melody in, and in the same rhythm as the guitar. And uh, another vocal part of his comes in really strong, really throaty, and I love it when he sings like that. This is definitely one of my favorite songs, and I think from what I'm reading on Last FM and such, that uh, a lot of people would agree with that. The next song, Under Cover of Darkness, I'm gonna come right out and say it is my favorite song on the album. It just feels like classic strokes to me. Um, it really feels like this song has Julian Casablanca's input the most. And whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what it sounds like to me. Um, the, I love the guitar intro with the harmonizing guitars. The Strokes always have really great harmonizing guitar parts, um, uh, which I really love. Uh, Nick Valencia and Albert Hammond Jr. do a great job of that. And really, this song sounds like it would come off of Room on Fire to me. And this isn't just my favorite song on the album. It's... It's up there with my favorite Strokes songs. It's just so catchy. It's ridiculous. And I told you I like the uh, the harmonizing guitars during the intro of this song. Well, during the verses, the guitar is even better. The and then when I was talking about Julian Casablanca's vocals, uh, he does it again. He really gets that throaty singing style when he sings, Are You Okay? And uh, I read a little bit about this song. Supposedly it's about um, a man who's off in the military and his girlfriend is back home. Um, and Julian said it, it felt kind of corny, but he wanted to tell that story. The next song, Two Kinds of Happiness, starts off sounding really 80s to me, which is a common trend these days. 
Um, really just in the bass and the drums and even the vocal melody. There's something about it. Um, like the snare's got that sort of corny tone to it that was really typical of 80s. Um, <clears throat> and, and it's uh, like an electronic beat. But it just sounds like something that would have been on like a preview for like an old 80s movie or something. Um, when the chorus comes in is when it gets more sounding like the strokes. Um, there's this little guitar part that's thrown in that just in between singing, there's it's this really tiny little thing that makes it this much better. And as the guitar starts to take over, the song gets even better. Um, there's a great guitar solo after the chorus. And once again, there's not a whole lot of complexity into what's going on, but it's just fun. The next song, You're So Right, is probably the song that I have the biggest problem with. I'm gonna be honest, I think Julian's voice sucks ass on this song. I think it's horrible. Um, it sounds like a shitty version of Sit Down, Stand Up, the last minute of that song by Radiohead on Hail to the Thief. Um, just, just with, I mean, I guess Julian's voice, he often does do that sort of mumbly, like, thing that Tom York is famous for. Um, he's done that before, where he's just kind of like, uh, like, uh, can't you see I'm trying, I don't even like it, which somehow works on that song, and just here it just sucks so much. Yeah, he repeats the same line over and over, which I guess uh, sort of adds to the, the annoyingness of it, but <clears throat> I, I really, I also just really don't like the programmed beat. I think it sounds like shit. I think it's really corny. Really the only cool part I like about this song that saves this song from being a skip is uh, the guitar. Once again, um, there's this really cool guitar solo in it that I love. It's it's not even very long, but it's just, it's badass, so it saves the song. The song is also pretty short, so I guess I don't have that much to complain about. Sorry guys, I had to switch out of the hoodie. It's getting freaking hot here. It's spring in Missouri. Um, I hate this shirt, though. I never wear it because I don't skateboard. I don't know why I have a skateboard shirt, but... Let's go to the next song, Taken for a, F for a Fool, which is a really solid song. Once again, harmonizing guitars sound awesome. Um, and there's uh, also a very catchy bass guitar. And I think, really, the bass guitar is sort of the, the bass, B-A-S-E, of what makes these songs really catchy sometimes. Um, yeah, I forget, I forget the name of the bass player, but he does a really good job in this band. Um, <clears throat> Julian's voice is back to sounding a lot better than it did on, on You're So Right, and, uh, nothing to bitch about here. Um, and once again, not, nothing too complex, uh, necessary to make a good song for the strokes. The cool thing about this song is the chorus is kind of teased. You get, uh, the first verse, and then you get the second verse, which is sung, uh, in a different melody. It's, it's kind of like a semi-pause, it's a little quieter than the first verse. Um, and the instrumentation is a little more sparse. And then the chorus comes in and the drums come in strong. And I just thought it was cool how they teased it a little bit. Gotta get in some foreplay sometimes. Gotta take that bullet. The next song, Games, is surprisingly one of my favorite songs on the album. It also sounds very 80s. I have to say the keyboard parts are, are really corny. And the electronic beat is pretty corny too. But... Uh, I really have to say the vocal melody works for me big time. I love it. It's actually very beautiful. And, I mean, it's it's pretty repetitive. In fact, it's the definition of repetitive, the chorus, because the chorus is just Julian singing Living in an Empty World like four times. But I love it. And another in interesting thing to note, I mean, you know how I've been going on and on about the great guitar parts from this album. Um, there's really not a whole lot of guitar on this song. Um, actually, for the first, it's about until uh, the second half of the song that you hear any guitar whatsoever, and the guitar actually sort of plays the song out. But uh, yeah, great song. The next song in the album is called Call Me Back. First time I heard this song, and I heard that guitar part at the beginning, I kept anticipating um, the typical strokes sort of sound, sound to come out with the uh, drums and bass uh, really driving the song. Um, but nothing came out, and really, uh, you, don't, you don't get any drums, minimal bass, um, and this song's very restrained. It's it's kind of mysterious, and in, in a pr it's pretty in a mysterious way. It's it's kind of hard to explain. It's very quiet, it's very soft, uh, but Julian's voice sounds really good, and uh, 
still manages to be pretty catchy. And the mood of Call Me Back doesn't last very long once we get to the song Gratisfaction. Uh, when this song opens up, I can't help but think of the song uh, Do You Believe in Magic? Uh, I, I don't know why. Next time you listen to this song, uh, sing in your head instead of what Julian's singing. Do you believe in magic? And it'll fit. I promise you. It's... And that's, the, that's kind of the thing about The Strokes, is a lot of their songs sound like other songs. I mean, Is This It, the guitar part for that sounds like Where's My Mind by the Pixies. The song Last Night They've Even Admitted is exactly like American Girl by Tom Petty. You're going to get that a little bit with The Strokes, but if you can look past it, you can enjoy the music. And uh, I, I think that's what I'll say about this song. Is, uh, it doesn't sound incredibly original or anything, but... Uh, it's, it's good. I, I will say, during the chorus, I don't like the line, you're never gonna get my love. I feel like that's a fucked out line, it's been used a million times, that uh, it's, it's hard to make it sound genuine, even if you're Julian Casablancas. Um, and once again, the guitar is really good. And uh, actually, yeah, I, li I like the drumming on this song also, I think it's pretty good. Because like, a lot of times, the drumming is especially basic. I mean, he will play... Uh, the first drum beat you learn as a drummer. And um, it's nice to see him sort of break out of that sometimes. The next song, Metabolism, feels kind of dark to me. It reminds me of the band Muse for some reason. Not so much newer Muse. I heard a newer Muse song that was like... Sounds really shitty. The old Muse I could tolerate and I wasn't a fan of, but um, I really hated the new... whatever new Muse song I heard recently. Anyway, The Strokes, right? Um, I, I like how Julian's voice, uh, keep, he keeps hitting higher and higher notes, and once again, the, the guitar sounds really good. Have I said that the guitar is good on this album? Because, um, let me reiterate that the guitar is pretty good on this song. There's a short guitar solo, but, uh, it's really good. The guitar's good. The next song on the album, and the last song, Life is Simple in the Moonlight, ends the song ends the album on an upbeat note, rather. Um, I love the transition from the verses to the chorus. Uh, the drums come in strong. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. And there's also some synth strings in the background during the chorus, which uh, is subtle, but, but uh, very effective. And I really love, there's one part, uh, one guitar part that uh, opens the song and is played throughout the song. Um, and there's some atmospheric guitars behind that guitar part. It sounds really cool. I think it makes it sort of mysterious, and I like it. Um, all in all, it's a pretty strong song. Good way to end, to, uh, end the album. So, all in all, I like this album a lot more than I thought I was going to, um, seeing that you know my status as a Strokes fan. Not a huge one, but um, I certainly enjoy them. Uh, the great thing about this album is that it's short and it's sweet. It's about 34 minutes, so uh, you, can, you can get through this thing and... One, sh one short sitting. Um, once again, the harmonized guitars, which I droned on and on and on about. Um, I droned on about that for a reason. Um, they, they're definitely a highlight. The guitars um, are awesome on this album. I love it. The, every guitar part is so catchy. All the solos are great. Um, you know, cheers to the guitar players on this album. They did a great job. Um, and another interesting thing is that uh, each song sort of offers something different, and that's that's what they were going for. Um, once again, you're not going to get a terribly cohesive album, and really, this album, you c it doesn't even matter what, to me, what order the songs are on. I could put this album on shuffle, and I wouldn't give a shit, and which kind of is why I uh, posed that question a couple months back, is how important is cohesion to you? And uh, in this case, it I don't really give a shit because I like all the songs on here. And once again, as with any Strokes album, just insanely catchy songs. Um, I'd say the cons, Julian's voice is, is different from song to song, um, which I really didn't like. I wish he'd just sing the way he normally does, um, especially with this the, the song I, I talked about. I can't remember which one it was. And uh, You're So Right. Really hated the way his voice so sounded on that album. But then with other songs, like Under Cover of Darkness, uh, his voice sounds awesome. So it's really, it's kind of hit or miss for me. Um, I will say songwriting, uh, I didn't <clears throat> feel that much of a connection to the band through this album. And that's because 
each person is contributing. So it's all coming from different people. It's start, sort of hard to get a hold of uh, any one idea, which um, is, is a little annoying. I mean, I feel like with Is, is This It, um, I really felt a connection to Julian, and now it's sort of the whole band. It's sort of hard to get a hold of one idea, and that that's what happens when five people are contributing on a ten-song album. Another small issue, some sometimes the electronic beats. I mean, as a drummer, I I always just like acoustic drums. That's just just how I'm programmed. So and when I hear programmed beats, I tend to get a little turned off, especially in the rock band setting. Um, I mean, with a, like a post-punk revival group like The Strokes, I just don't feel like electronic drums should be used as much as they use them. A small issue. Um, overall, I'm going to give this thing an 8 out of 10. I really liked it a lot. Uh, I can listen to this in any setting, and uh, it'll just cheer me up. Their, song, their songs and their music are just so fun, and uh, people should really cherish that, because uh, if you're having fun listening to music, then uh, it's good times. So once again, the album is Angles by The Strokes um, on Rough Trade. So yeah, go check this baby out. Um, and uh, I'll see you next week. I really will. Actually, Sean Duffy will see you next week. So, yeah. Bye. <laughs>